Dave and Jimmy, happy Wednesday. It is 7 o'clock. Wherever you are and whatever object our show comes out of. And Jimmy, I understand there are people listening in Australia and England today. Yeah, this is crazy. I'm, I'm getting emails literally from all over the world saying they're listening online right now. So that's good. So I'm glad our company has an internet channel for us. So you can go to DaveAndJimmy.com yeah. and hit the listen live if you want to. Anyway, we do appreciate you tuning in. This next segment, which is normally celebrity sleaze, we're going to just uh, turn up, up, and around. And we're going to say hi to a guy named Ted. Hi, Ted. Hi, hi there. Ted. Local sleep. And you know no. what? Can we shut that door over there, guys? We'll just, okay. Let's get quiet here for a minute. Now, okay. it was about this time yesterday that uh, Jimmy played some audio for me. Mm -hmm. It was very, very interesting. And it was of you. The audio was, mm -hmm. and, and the story was, uh, there is a man who was, at the time, homeless, mm -hmm. who had these amazing deep pipes, a deep voice. And the media loves something interesting and unique. And I got to say, and I don't want to stereotype people who are homeless, but uh -huh. very few times you run up to a parking light and a guy comes uh -huh. up and goes, hey, you know, <laughs> just you're watching WTT. Yeah, it doesn't happen that right. way. And that was interesting enough. And interesting enough that Jimmy and I, we heard the audio and we said, this guy deserves a little light on him. Yeah, we, so we heard your audio oh, yesterday, so much. Chad, and we were like, we need to play this. And we played it over and over and over yesterday. Okay. And we thought, well, you know, we got we to gotta get this guy in here. We got to see mm -hmm. if we can get him off the street. With that kind of talent, you don't need to be homeless, is what we thought. Yes, sir. And uh, our listeners heard it. Someone got hold of you. You called us. Long story short, you ended up in the chair here today. Mm -hmm. And but, but can we quickly get into your story? How did you end up on the street? How did you end up sleeping under bridges? How did you end up walking up to cars with a piece of cardboard okay. saying, you should hear my voice and give me a dollar? All right. Well, uh, um 1993. Well, nine, I take that back. In 1996, I started drinking alcohol pretty bad. Yeah. Pretty bad. Were you in the media at that time? I had just, as a matter of fact, WJZA, which is the it's new... It's a jazz station. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you were working a jazz uh, moment. Exactly. And uh, the um, alcohol and everything was getting a little bad for me, and I was uh, showing up late and just, you know, uh, just taking my job for granted. Right. And uh, uh, then some other drugs became involved, you know, uh, marijuana, cocaine, and so forth. And so... Um, Did one lead to another? And I don't want to interrupt your story. Yeah, pretty but, much, pretty okay. much. One right. one led to another. I, You know, I, I was an alcoholic prior to uh, any other addictions that I had thereafter, but I was an alcoholic, and so I would have bouts of sobriety here and there. And so um, after that took its place, uh, I just started really feeling in that self-pity mode, you know, mm -hmm. just going around... You know, and and, and the voice and I, just became no more than just a novelty. You know, I would I would uh, do all kind of voice characterizations and make jokes, commercials you don't hear every day. And then I was taping it, so it just, there was just no kind of ambition to try to pursue any type of um, radio work or television work, voiceover work or anything. So um, I I got acquainted with the uh, twelve step group of uh, AA and NA. Okay. I know it's based on attraction rather than promotion. And so, um, uh, when did that happen? When did you find yourself walking forward? In ni in ninety seven. Okay. Well, uh, let's say I had so many relapses. Oh, okay. Since so you started the walk. Yeah, in because I've got like uh, two and a half years now. Okay. Oh, you were know? you unemployed when you would relapse? I mean, would you get fired from job after job? Actually, I I didn't even want to work, you know. But really? yes, yes, I, I never I never worked back in radio after Z one hundred three. I, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, one hundred seven point five. So it was just a spiral. Yeah, yeah. And Secular drugs, alcohol, get clean, then same thing. Right. I'd get like seven months clean, and then all of a sudden I'd ha I'd find a reason to just you know fall off the wagon. And uh, I used to always just have in, in this inner like l l the Lord didn't take take my voice away you know i said well maybe radio is not my my last call maybe i can get into ministry or or read children's books or narrate something you know and so it was like um you know um uh, one of the biggest things that i used to always play with and get a little animated with was uh i'm ted williams reporting for abc news and from all of us good night <laughs> That kind of thing. Wow. so i always wanted to do that kind of thing and my kids man i i, I love all of my children i have uh uh, seven girls and two boys. Wow. And, <laughs> uh, and I have a lot of grandchildren. I'd like to name them all, but I know the time well, doesn't permit. After three kids, I said, it's vasectomy time, dude. Come on. Well, apparently you have time for something else besides drinking. Uh, uh, yeah, but they're all adults stuff. now. And, 
okay. and all. Now, so I, let me ask you this then. No. One thing leads to another, and you end up homeless, right, and very yes. down on your luck. Yes, I went to uh, the faith mission and uh, um, uh, the uh, Friends of the Homeless, and, um, uh, you know, that was it. And, and Were your children not able to help you during this time? Oh, when, they when you need a place they, to stay and all that? They, they wanted to help me so bad, but I was very mistrusting. And had they had an uh, uh, intervention show back then, I think they would have uh, done that. I think yeah, I right. would have been probably the, the lead candidate for intervention. You know? So you didn't really want anything to do with them. Right, exactly. And, and, and they would keep me for a few days. But when I was uh, going through my bout, bouts of sobriety and, and withdrawal and all, I was eating them out of house and home. Oh, okay. So they were like, right. okay, Dad, I don't know. It's a little toss-up. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you can't sit here and eat my baby strained carrots, right. you know, right. because you're hungry. You I know? love you, Dad, but I'm not sure what you're going to do. Right, exactly, exactly. So how do we come to 2010 and you're... You're basically on the street. Your hair, your hair was wild. You're yeah, wearing camo. I just you didn't got a care handwritten anymore. sign. I didn't care. But one thing I did acknowledge, and probably let me just first and foremost say this, and I want to take this opportunity to do this. One of the things that I did not do in all of my heyday uh, of of, of uh, success and all, when I had some great times and great numbers in the books and all, you know, radio ratings. Uh, yeah, radio ratings. Um, I never, not once, thanked God for anything, any of it any of the backstage passes, any of the perks that comes with the jobs, didn't, didn't not one time say, thank you, Lord, for anything. And I think I, I pretty much fell into the story of Job where God said, listen, devil, have your way with him. Go ahead, but don't take his life. Wow. Whatever you want to do with him, make him suffer. And, let, and so AA and NA and, and CA and all of the 12-step groups and, uh, all wrapped up into one. And a very dear friend of mine, Alfred Battle, who is standing here to my right, who never gave up on me because even when I was holding the sign, in spite of all what, what people may have thought and player hated on me and all that, you know, this guy here, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a promoter and he also has his own band. But anytime he had a local concert coming up or whatever, I was the voice he needed. And a lot of times when he would air my commercials on various stations in this market, you know, uh, some of the local announcers, and, and, and of course I won't mention any names, but he, uh, uh, they would be like, oh, that guy's still around, you know. Uh, great pipes, man, but that's old school stuff, you know. Let me stop you just so I can end this break. Okay. So you've been clean how long? Two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yes. And what you are asking for from heaven, if for nothing else, uh -huh. a second chance. That's, yes, sir. I have talent. Now I have resolve. I have fixed myself personally. I'm willing to open myself up to the world. Let's see what happens. I'll do anything for a meal. <laughs> I'll do anything for a meal. And if it happens to be voice work, God bless my soul. And mine, this is just outrageous what's going on Are you loving being behind the mic again? Yes. Are you? Good. Yes. I can tell. Because we were talking yesterday, and we were really kicking this around. We wanted to bring you in. Yes, we sir. wanted to give you a job for at least a day just to say, okay, we're going to pay you the wages you would have earned had you worked for us for a day. Oh, and, and that is around here in March. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's okay. You that's might get okay. a croissant, which. <laughs> but that's okay. It's I can go for it. It got big. Yes, it just because, God. again, the power of media, sometimes looking for that unique little moment somewhere that I haven't heard of before. Uh -huh. And that's what's going to happen next. Jimmy, we're going to break and we come back. Ted, who <laughs> I don't want to stick you with the stamp of homeless DJ, but yeah. that explains yes, our situation. Yes, yes. This pretty... is what happens in 24 hours. It will blow your mind, and Ted doesn't know anything about it. We'll take this break. This is Dave and Jimmy. Arbitron rated number one.